Hey guys, figured I would make this short primer in regards to what is happening with former iRacing streamer Jason Jacoby. A lot of NASCAR YouTubers are beginning to talk about him, and it's probably important you guys are brought up to speed. First question, who is Jason Jacoby? He is a former iRacing streamer. He had his own website, his own apparel, and even his own fan club. He was popular enough to strike up small friendships with drivers such as Alex LeBay and even Chase Briscoe. You'll see in some photos Jason's wearing a Chase Briscoe fire suit. He obtained that directly from Chase. I don't know how deep their friendship goes, but it was a thing. Jason also promoted Seat Time Racing School on his social media and seemed to have some sort of partnership with them as well. This guy was not a person just minding his own business in the corner of iRacing's little social sphere. He was trying to make a name for himself. His history in sim racing actually goes back quite a ways. He used to race in Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s private NASCAR Racing 2003 season league in the mid to late 2000s, but according to his own blog post, he's actually kicked out of those leagues very quickly, and it's entirely likely that Dale Jr., Martin Truex, and AJ Allmendinger do not remember him. Next question, what is he doing? Why are people talking about him? The YouTube channel he used to stream iRacing on, he now uses to upload several crazy unintelligible rants per day. They alternate between begging Dale Earnhardt Jr. to give him a ride in NASCAR. Dale, if you keep ignoring the message of charity and give me a ride for charity water. Threatening people. I will not let any of you rest until I see Joni Axon be killed for what she's done. And slandering people. For you, Darian Gilliam, you probably rape goats. I'm sure Darian Gilliam goes to Black Sheep and rapes them. Third question. Why is Jason doing this? What would possess someone to make videos like this? Jason has schizophrenia. In publicly available court documents I found online, Jason has been in and out of psych hospitals, and I believe he's on some sort of medication plan as well. If you go on any sort of schizophrenia support message board, there are hundreds of stories of people just like Jason. This person's daughter is obsessed with a rock band singer and has saved over 10,000 pictures of him. This other person's child walks around the house slashing things with knives and muttering to himself. This guy believed the metal band Pantera was stealing his song ideas before going and shooting up the place. This is pretty normal for this disorder. Fourth question, why are people making a big deal about this? Why talk about this at all? Jason is stalking at least 10 different people and trying to get them fired from their jobs. People are trying to raise awareness because they're unsure why law enforcement doesn't seem to be taking any sort of action. This behavior warrants criminal charges. He's been stalking and threatening his ex-girlfriend, for a variety of reasons. He sent schizophrenic messages to my employer, demanding they fire me. They did fire me. I lost my job because of it. He sent schizophrenic messages to Augusta National Golf Course, demanding they fire a guy named Rhett McBride. For what reason? I don't know. He sent schizophrenic messages to his old high school teacher, Joni Axon. She's had to take a ton of time off work to get a restraining order against him. Obviously, the employer's not happy. Joni's not the only teacher he's done this to. He's harassed other teachers from his old high school that he hasn't seen in 14 years. He harasses Dale Earnhardt Jr., begging him to give him a NASCAR ride. In fact, he continues this with other NASCAR teams, constantly emailing them, begging for a ride. He's harassed Max Pappas Incorporated, begging them for a steering wheel, and then slandering them when they tell him to fuck off. He's harassed Alpine Stars, begging them for a set of shoes, and then when they tell him to fuck off, he slanders them. This is my favorite, though. He's harassed Deborah Gonzalez, who appears to be a member of the athens Clark County District Attorney. He's been trying to lure underage teenagers in the iRacing community to come stay at his house for a sleepover, even offering them money to pay for their flight. This happened on more than one occasion. Not to mention, he's also been busting into some of my online accounts and just buying a bunch of shit with them. I woke up one day and discovered he bought $60 worth of black girl porn. I'm not the only person he did this to. He essentially has a list of everyone he doesn't like in the entire sim racing community and just sits there all day trying to guess their emails and either hack into their accounts, gain their credit card information, or just slander them. This is all behavior that warrants criminal charges. Basically, this guy has been stalking anyone and everyone who's had a single conversation with him over the past 10 to 15 years, including a ton of little kids. Fourth question, do his parents know about this? Does his family know about this? Yes. His father, who passed away recently, was a very high-profile concert promoter. In some videos, Jason admits that the family was actually actively hiding computers from him so he couldn't continue to harass and slander people online and get himself into more legal trouble. However, they would then go on vacation, leaving him alone in the house so he could find the computers, set them back up again, and continue to harass and stalk people. This was all occurring in their house on their internet connection. <sighs> I don't have my smartphone. My parents went out of town. They went to Helen, Georgia. And I found one of the computers they hid from me. They're keeping me from my people, man. And according to his blog, they spend a pretty serious amount of money on lawyers to try and keep their son out of trouble. Some iRacers he's been harassing have actually tried to ask his mom for help, but she just blocks them. They don't give a shit. For some of the criminal charges he's facing, he's attempting to plead mental incompetency. However, some of his lawyers are actually quitting on him because he's just so erratic and uncontrollable. All right, guys, my lawyer quit because I did not obey his rules because I want to tell my story. 
Question 5. Why aren't the police doing anything? Why is this guy still a free man? That's a very good question. According to Jason's bond conditions, he's not allowed to be posting on YouTube or any equivalent social media platform. Full stop. The moment he began posting on his blog back in July, he should have been arrested. He wasn't. The moment he returned to YouTube, about a week or so back, again, should have been arrested. He wasn't. His behavior towards me regarding the stalking and potential credit card fraud, again, should have been arrested. Wasn't. So Austin, I love you, but that's that's not my choice, you know what I mean? I, I can only do my best just like you can do your best. And Another condition of the bond states that he's actually not allowed to post anything, anywhere, about his ex-girlfriend, a girl by the name of Kenzie Gordon. He violated this term at the beginning of December. Was he arrested? No. Everyone who's been affected by him has constantly reported this guy to the police. Nothing has happened. He is basically free to harass, stalk, and smear pretty much whoever he feels like getting angry at that day. And there will be no repercussions at all. Last question. Can people such as myself, or Darian Gilliam, or Dale Earnhardt Jr., or anyone this guy has slandered, sue him for defamation? The answer is convoluted. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Darian Gilliam probably can't sue him. The reason for that is because they haven't tangibly lost anything from what Jason has said. Nobody actually believes Dale Jr. is sharing his wife with black guys. Hey everyone, the cat's out of the bag. Amy runs loose with other people and Dale's happy to share. I can tell you what, I've seen Amy's eyes and she's got eyes for me. It's written in a blog post below. And obviously, Darian Gilliam, you can argue, is actually profiting off Jason's insanity because anytime he makes a video, he gets ad revenue on it. I, however easily could sue Jason Jacoby and his family. I've lost my job because of this guy, full stop. That's not a myth. I can also probably present compelling evidence that his family is at least partially responsible or complicit in Jason's actions. They provided the internet connection, it was occurring under their roof, and they had 100% knowledge that Jason was doing this to people online. That's why they were hiding computers and technology from him. However, based on a similar incident that went through the British Columbia court system a few years back, I'm looking at approximately $30,000 in legal fees, and that's if I win. Even if everything goes according to plan, and the courts down in Georgia find Jason guilty of defamation and make him pay up, do you really think Jason has that kind of money to pay me? This guy's living on food stamps. Because if I'm on food stamps and can help homeless people around here, like my neighbor Steve... So in short, if this guy doesn't get dealt with, we have a stalker and a harasser in the sim racing community who has been given free reign to target anyone he doesn't like and destroy their life with no repercussions. His parents will also spend whatever money they need to to ensure he stays out of trouble and tie this up in the court system as long as possible. In short, we are fucked. There is a serial harasser and stalker in the sim racing community and we can't do anything about it. That's why people are talking about it.